What's up, y'all? It's Tight Shirt Terry Wolf, and I'm back for another video. I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. And remember to be thankful for your freaking life today because you didn't have to have it. As you saw the intro, Osmo Pocket 3 Rollers. I got my man Abe out here. Say what up. What and up? this is my dog, man. I love you. Thanks for coming out love you too, to help bro. me with this video. So let me give y'all a little kind of BTS on what's going on. So as you saw in the last vlog, I got a new bike. Here it is. But obviously, I can't film the bike and ride the bike at the same time. So Abe is like a professional motorcycle rider. So uh, he's wow. gonna ride, <laughs> he's gonna ride my bike. Um, so here's the thing, we gonna get on the freeway, we gonna go downtown, we gonna see how well the Osmo Pocket 3 does uh, at speed, number one, number two, um, attached to a car, number three, in the dark, okay? So let me show you the setup real quick. So on the back of the truck, Thanos, hey Thanos, um, I got a Ulanzi suction mount right here and this thing ain't going nowhere. I really wanted to, I really bleh, wanted to put it down here but it won't stick to like a curved surface. So this is the best place that I could put it. Um, I don't want it in harm's way, so I don't want to be on a freeway having rocks and stuff come up, potentially breaking the Osmo pocket. And I wanted to keep the Osmo pocket in the truck's wake instead of putting it on the side to avoid all of the wind turbulence and all that other stuff. So as far as sound, I'm gonna put a DJI Mic 2 in his pocket right here so we can pick up some authentic sound from the engine. And um, I'm gonna be controlling the Osmo Pocket 3 on the back of the truck with the Mimo app in the driver's seat while I'm driving. Don't do this, okay? This is dangerous. I should have another person, so I'm not condoning doing this, but it is what it is, okay? So uh, let's get to it. Okay, we ran into a problem. Um, the Mimo app won't connect with the Osmo Pocket all the way back there, okay? When I'm sitting all the way up there, it's just too long of a distance for it to reliably connect. So I had to move it to the side, which I think is gonna introduce some problems because of wind and all that other good stuff, but time will tell. This ain't going nowhere, so it's solid. Let's see. We're looking through some of this footage and it's actually not bad. Uh, you could definitely see some bumps like the jitters, uh, which I was expecting that, man. This gimbal is so tiny being mounted on the side of a 6,000 pound truck going over speed bumps and bumps in the road. But some of these clips are freaking clean, yo. Look at this. On the freeway, it's like mass move. It's holding up way better than I thought it would because we was going at least like, yeah, yeah, we was going at least like 70, 75 miles an hour and the Osmo actually held up pretty good. So we gonna ride around downtown um, and get a couple more shots. Um, I actually think I wanna switch sides. I'm trying to think, no, because you need to be on my left side. You need to be on my left side. The problem right now is all of the shots are coming from my left um, and I don't want them all from the left. So, no, we're going to switch it to the right and maybe we can find a few streets where they are lit enough and you could be on my right hand side like you are right now because you're my right hand freaking man, yo. See, see what I did? See what I did right there? 
So this is how powerful the DJI Mimo app is. Right now, the Osmo Pocket is on the outside of the truck, and I can literally move around. I can change the gimbal direction, all of the settings, and it's pretty much latency-free. I mean, it hiccups here and there, but being able to do this from inside the freaking car, this is like a, a mini DJI Pro transmission system with the bigger controller, with the screen and all that stuff on it. This is like so clutch, bro. For real, so clutch. Yo, side note, I am so impressed with this thing. It was only like 40 bucks, I think. Um, I'll put the link in the description to this Ulanzi. But this thing is so fire, man. It's getting a little chilly out here. He out here, he out here complaining, talking about some, talking about some, he got a pee, his teeth <laughs> chattering and everything. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm actually very impressed with this Osmo Pocket. Um, I think it's important that we remember that this is not a cinema camera. This is like a tiny camera that has a gimbal and all that stuff built into it. But we about to hop on the freeway and go home. I'm gonna put it in low light mode and then see how good it could do. So with that being said, the other thing I noticed is a lot of y'all been watching my videos like coming back, but y'all not subscribing. Like what on earth is that about? And we need to fix that right now. So hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. Let's get on this freeway and go home and see how good the Osmo Pocket could do in low light mode. And then we'll wrap the video up. Let's get it. production synopsis okay because i'm literally sitting there editing a video that you're watching right now and it's almost freaking midnight so let's have a, a drinky drink okay cheers it's been a long day look i know i said this already in the video but i think we need to be mindful that this is not a freaking cinema camera okay this is a tiny camera with a gimbal and a one inch sensor and we literally suction cupped it to the side of a six thousand pound truck in the middle of the night okay at 85 degree speeds just yeeted the thing and you know it performed better than i expected it to this was a very difficult test for any camera especially the osmo pocket 3 and i honestly believe if you were to do this at slower speed in broad daylight you would have some fantastic results for your roller shots for social media out of a camera that's literally that freaking small so a few observations the first one is did you notice on the way downtown there was a whole lot of pulsing and jumping at a gimbal and stuff like that but on the way back when we were doing the night mode testing literally going the same speeds 
everything was fine. It was super smooth. I honestly think it was due to where the camera was mounted and maybe the direction of the wind because we were going the opposite direction. So your mileage may vary, but that was an observation. As you saw, when we got downtown going around 25, 35 miles an hour, the results were fantastic. They were super smooth, no jitters, no jumping, no pulsing, nothing like that. So again, I firmly believe if you did this at slower speeds that your results would be a whole lot better. Now, let's talk about image quality because honestly, this is where the biggest pain point came from. And again, we filmed this in the middle of the freaking night, okay? And it's a one inch sensor. I would never push the Osmo Pocket 3 to the extremes that I did when it comes to ISO, except for doing the test like this. I typically never go over 1600. Man, I was at the upper limits of what the Osmo Pocket can do. And even in night mode, which night mode did do better. We were still up at like 12,800 ISO, 16,000 ISO. So the bad side of this is obviously when you push ISO that far, because we're essentially using it as a light source, it gets rid of all of our dynamic range. So color grading it was a freaking nightmare. Obviously y'all saw it. It's a lot of blockiness, artifact and noise and all that other good stuff. And of course you could use like freaking neat video and all that, I'm not doing that. But the point I'm trying to make is obviously these were not favorite conditions for the Osmo Pocket 3. Now, night mode, as I said, did fare a whole lot better. I thought it looked better, although the blacks were kind of crushed, and unfortunately, you can't use D-Log in when it comes to night mode, so you're kind of stuck. But either way, it sucked the color grade, all of it. The other thing I noticed, if you pay attention to every single one of the clip, there's a very, very nasty flare that comes from the Osmo Pocket 3 when strong light sources are present. It's in every single clip, and the problem is, it also gives off a whole lot of purple for Fringing, green fringing, and it's really, really difficult to get rid of. So I will probably caution you against using this camera for night rollers because that flaring and ghosting and all that stuff is a problem. And what's so crazy is I remember when I tested the ZV-1 Mark II, it had none of that. So it does boil down to the quality of the lens. Obviously, it's got a Zeiss lens on there, but again, something to be mindful of. I think at the end of the day, we got to remember that I put this little tiny camera probably in a situation way more difficult than it was ever designed to handle and even with that the shots that were crisp and smooth and clean they looked good good enough for freaking social media and i'm actually happy with the way that the osmo pocket 3 fares so let me know what y'all think down in the comments i will leave a link to that suction mount also in the comment section and if you want to know how i got the bike the price i paid for it all the other good stuff oh i'm catching the buzz here make sure you hit that link right up there and watch that video after this so until next time hope y'all enjoyed this video tight shirt tear warfield pissing Piss, peace and chicken grease. Oh my God, I'm out. Peace.